Today is March 11th. O'Neill Cruz is turning on the power. Dowry Moretta kickstarts an injury discussion. And we'll talk about Jared Jones and the spring breakout game coming up this week. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and that. My name is Josh and I'm joined as always by my brother Jake. What's up, Jake? How we doing, man? Look at this, man. Got the Bradenton t-shirt hoodie on right now. If I could get my... It's amazing how I can't figure out where my mic is and why I can't move away from it. Let's go above it. Let's go above it. Let's go above it. (laughs) It's awesome. Uh, Pretty sweet. Yeah. Ben Sherrington shows up on the broadcast with it. Everybody says, how do I get my hands on that? Nowhere in Bradenton. Yeah, we couldn't find it. So, uh, I found out where you could buy it and was telling Katie about it. And her mom got it for me for my birthday. Nice. So, pretty pumped about it, man. I love it. It's very comfortable. It's it's a t-shirt. Yeah. It's it's like a, it's a That's short really sleeve cool. t-shirt with a hood and a front pocket, which is the most important thing about it, right? <laughs> I mean other yeah. than the cool like Bradenton in the in the Pittsburgh font, but um but yeah, got my hands on one. And I see you have your St. Patrick's Day hat on. Yep. St. Yep. Patrick's Day this coming Sunday. I will wear my green on the next episode because we will be recording on St. Patrick's Day. I figured we're more green. Yeah. Yeah. I just figured, I mean, we do it every year, right? I mean, if if you guys are watching the YouTube ever, you're going, well, duh. (laughs) 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 These guys are definitely going to be wearing green. (laughs) (laughs) So I actually like, uh, Ashley bought me this hat and these, these little pins, right? So this is just a little little shamrock pin. Okay. And uh, I, I it's, she got like a pack of like 30 of them. So I'm giving them to everybody at work so we can wear them all week. Because I'm like, we, we need more than just a day, right? Sure. Let's do this for a week. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Spring training, full force. Got a mm-hmm. good many things to talk about today. Um Dowry Moretta uh, this mm-hmm. week found out some news there. Uh, Kutch started playing games. Palacio started playing games. Kutch hit a dinger. Kutch hit a dinger. Um, yeah, so like, you know, then we'll talk a little bit about some pitching. Um, some news on that, some Jared Jones conversation. Um, this week is the spring breakout game. So we'll kind of shut this thing down uh, at the end of the episode, talking about that a little bit. Um, (laughs) It was funny. I don't know if you got called out, but our mom said, hey, how's come you didn't talk about the second base battle? You said at the beginning of the episode you were going to. (laughs) And I was like, oh, you listened. (laughs) But uh, she's like, you didn't talk about it. I was like, well, we probably ran out of time. Yeah. Because we run out of time. All the time. (laughs) There's always just a few <laughs> things that we either skip or we never get to. Not always. Not always. So I should stop saying what we're going to talk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we'll talk about all those things. Um, yeah, I mean, let's get right into it. Uh, before we get started with some of them, Pirates signed Eric Eric Lauer. When, I, when I'm reading it now, is it Eric? Did I mess that up? Yeah, it's Eric. Okay, Eric Lauer. To a minor league deal. I was interested to see all the people talking about how he's going to be in the rotation. It's a minor league deal, guys. Calm down. <laughs> okay? He's not in front of anyone right now. Right. Um, right. And then, you know, a couple notes here around the, around the division and players around the division and baseball mm-hmm. in, its, in and of itself. Joey Votto signs a minor league deal with the Blue Jays. I think we said at the beginning of the offseason, or I said, if he doesn't go back to the Reds, 
it has to be the Blue Jays. It can't be anyone else. Yeah, w- w- he posted a picture on Twitter. It's like, now, I, now I'm a little Blue Jay or something like that. And it was a picture of him as a baby, like as like a one or two year old wearing a I'm a little Blue Jays bib. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, hometown team, that makes sense. Anything else, just hang it up, dude. Mm-hmm. Just hang it up. You're a red. You'll always be a red. So without that hometown thing, there's just a no point for this to happen. Right. That's my opinion. Sounds like he would have signed with whoever. Yeah. Yeah. He just wants he wants to play. He thinks he can still do it. Mm-hmm. You think he can? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. Mean, I mean, could, there's a uh, lot he, to doubt, right? Right. Right. I'm sure he could be okay. Yeah. He'd be but a. I don't think he's going to beat anybody out for a no, job. He's a part. At best, he's a part time player who's a good leader in the clubhouse. Good a fun, pinch hitter. A fun interview. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he'll give you good at bats when he's up there, but they just might not end with results. <laughs> right. <laughs> Other right. than a good at bat. Mm-hmm. Quality AB. Good job. <laughs> he's he'll he'll do fine in quality AB. <laughs> um, the other note from in the division, Noel V. Marte suspended 80 games for positive PED test. I had a buddy of mine who I called this week, which I mean we all know how this world works, right? We don't call people all the time. Mm-hmm. But we were having pizza, and we were trying to get Jeff to come over, and I called him. I had not seen the news yet. And he goes, dude, I'm so mad. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what's, what happened? I, I'm, in my head, I'm like, crap, this is a good thing I called. And then he's like, oh, you're not calling about Marte? <laughs> and I was like, no. I wanted to see if he wanted to come over for pizza. <laughs> But That's yeah, funny. we uh, we talked about that for a bit. But I mean, here's the thing. This is why you sign people when people say that doesn't make any sense. Well, mm-hmm. now all of a sudden you've got the depth. I mean, most of the time it's for injuries, not stuff like this. But they're not going to be. I mean, this is a guy who what played 20, 30 games. You know what I'm saying? Last year, mm-hmm. like this guy isn't he's going to be good, but you'll be all right. I don't think it's really going to make a difference in wins and losses for the Reds. Right. Yeah. For me, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe Reds fans who are a little closer to seeing this guy play might think different and that's <laughs> fine. You know what I'm saying? They, they obviously know yeah. their players more than I do, but I, that's why you have depth. And that's why, you know, the pirates not going out and signing more quality starting pitching was a question for us because we're like, <laughs> Hey, you can't have too much. <laughs> but in the same light, though, this is the Chapman signing with the news from Dowie Moretta today or this week where we said, and everybody said that didn't make sense, and all of a sudden it was needed. Yeah. Just for more bullpen arms and depth, especially considering the way that some of those fringe guys who are fighting for a spot like Selby and Nicholas have not looked good. Yeah. So now one of those guys may end up in this bullpen, and it's like, ugh. You know, let's hope they can turn something around or we're going to have to, you know, make some moves. Yeah. All right. Let's get moving. We've got some uh, kind of some quick hits here to talk about. Uh, Kutch is playing homered first Friday, first homer of the spring this Friday. Um, I don't know what veteran going through the motions. He's going to know how much he <laughs> needs to play. Right. Yeah. I yeah. think uh, he, he did just, mention. You know, you, you you know he's healthy, but at the same time, you, you still want to take it a little easy. Yeah, even he said that. He's like, we're easing mm-hmm. it in, coming off the injury. Yeah. Like, you're still, you know, you're still easing it in. Yeah. Um, Palacios uh, had the had the knee thing. He's playing now, and then he got sick. So then he wasn't playing today. Uh, Paul Skeens was told that he's starting in the minor leagues. No surprise to me. Are you surprised? No. No, he was not going to crack this rotation out of the gate it was never going to happen i mean the guy has to get used to five days he has to that's the that's the main thing i'll say because we've been impressed with him on the mound yeah he has to get accustomed to pitching every five days period he hasn't done that and that's and that's what they're saying he needs to get in the routine he needs to learn how to 
deal with the routine of that. Yeah, I think the rest of the stuff he has to work on, maybe that change up that we talked about that maybe he doesn't have a, quite a great feel for yet. That's fine. He could also work with you know, work on that at the major league level if he's that good and we're not, right? Right. right. But first and foremost, he I mean he has to get used to 5 days. Well, he you has know, to. And he's and I think it's really really good that they're leaving him at the major league camp as well. Yeah, that's cool. You know, I mean Everybody knows he's, he's he he very well could make his debut this year. Um, it's not a guarantee, but they still want him working with the guys that you know that yeah. he needs to be working with. Just about right, and just being around those guys. Well, he was also scratched from Saturday's outing because he was <laughs> sick. So I would expect this to be a trend in the next week or so. Uh, guys are probably going to get sick. Pirates put <laughs> up a video. I didn't want to. I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to put it on blast. Right. But like right. the Pirates put a video up of Brian Reynolds mic'd up, which first off I thought this is going to be like a 10 second clip. But he was laughing <laughs> around and he was talking and he was talking about some guy being small and he could fit him in his back pocket and all this stuff. Go watch the clip. The thing is, is Palacios is right there talking to him. So Reynolds is going to miss some time this week with the flu, okay? <laughs> <laughs> or flu-like <laughs> systems, whatever that, uh, symptoms, whatever that means. Um, but anyway, uh, Quinn Priester's outing today. You and I talked about uh, about Quinn Priester. We mm-hmm. saw him pitch, and we were really impressed. Now, I've seen, I've seen him pitch seven innings in a game, in the minors, and I've also seen him give up nine runs in the first inning. For for Priester, for me, it has been location, 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 which reminds me a lot of Glass. Now, when he was in the minors, obviously not, you know, 150 miles an hour versus you know 93, but. It's it's the idea that like he either has it and he's going to pitch well or he can't find the strike zone or and he's going to get he's going to walk a ton and get shelled. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that was glass now in the minors and that was uh and that was Priester. I I saw glass now one time in the minors just pumping 98 99 100 just just could not find the I think he had eight walks and six strikeouts and still made it through six innings some or five innings, six <laughs> innings somehow. But it was like, okay, so basically when you throw 100 in AAA, you don't get hit, but that doesn't mean you're good. <laughs> so it, it was a thing. But no, I mean, the outing today, three solid innings, really kind of saying Quinn Priester's making it hard. And then... He gives up a couple easy hits, and then he hits a guy, somehow hits a guy in the arm. I mean, the batter didn't even know. He backed out of the box thinking maybe it was a batter's interference or he leaned over the plate. And then finally he's like, oh, I get to go to first. And then ran to first. So, like, it was like this weird thing, but it loaded the bases and Cody Clemens hit a a grand slam to tie the game. So you go back and your box score looking, Mm -hmm. you're going to say, same old Quinn Priester, he's terrible. I just didn't see it that way, man. I, I thought he was. I thought he was really good. Uh, Stephen Brault mentioned the first time you go four innings, it's exhausting. I mean, he threw it right over the middle of the plate, and he <laughs> threw two of them there in the fourth inning. One was fouled off, I think, and the other one was the grand slam. He threw one there in the second inning, which I think was fouled off, or a single, or I forget what it was. I literally just looked it up earlier. And the Velo was about the same. He doesn't he's he's an interesting guy because he can sit anywhere on the fastball, anywhere from 90 to 95. His sinker actually has a very similar velo to it, just with a different movement. So, you know, you wonder he threw them both 20% of the time today. And so you, you wonder, like, okay, that's 40% fastballs. Yeah. Probably a little too much, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where I'm at with that, right? Because I also had somebody say, and I and I didn't quite look at the like the sequence of all the pitches, but they said it looked like he was throwing all soft stuff in that fourth inning, like they were working on something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it was like, oh, it's a 2-0 count. Let me throw a get-me-over fastball, and Cody Clemens put it in the, on the boardwalk. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So there is a little bit of that where you say, Okay, what? How much of that was spring? Because then, 
had some other people say this is his story, which I was surprised to hear because what I've seen of his story as far as when he was good in AAA was it's the first inning or he'll be solid. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And But in the major leagues, which he didn't have a good season, how, right. how do you compare that? How do you how do you look at that to say, do I write that whole thing off because it wasn't good? And then if he does it again, you say maybe that's just who he is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly it. In, in my opinion, you know, you go by track record first, and the track record is, you know, like you were saying, if he gets through that first inning, he's gonna be solid. Okay, so last year just was a bad year. It, it, it's unfortunate when it happened in his career. Because now people are questioning him, whereas if he would have had five or six solid years and a bad year, it's it's a bad year. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a whole lot of, I mean, it, how many would he have? Ten starts. Yeah. Okay. Like that. So I mean, it was even small sample. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Uh, you know, everybody's gonna ha- everybody's gonna break into the league a different way. Some guys red hot and then struggle. Some guys struggle right out of the gate and then have to figure it out right away. I think maybe pitchers are more so struggle out of the gate and grow and hitters are more like you were called up when you were hot yeah. and nobody's got the book on you yet. So you tend to, you, you tend to do well early. And then when they, when they either adjust or when you cool down, think Ellie De La Cruz, right? Came in just, Oh my gosh, look at this dude. He's going to be, you know, the next, O'Neill Cruz, I hate to say. Everybody's <laughs> like, "No, don't do that." Yeah. It's like, dudes, if you're not comparing the two, you're you're kidding yourself. But, <laughs> but yeah, but then he like stunk. You know what I mean? Like flat mm-hmm. out stunk. And so that was, you know, you could say that was either the league punching back or him just being exposed or getting more right handed at bats because he can't hit right handed. But anyway, um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. And Quinn Priester's something to, to watch. I'm not sold yet he's not in the rotation yet right but he's looked good and you saw some things kind of get to him today it'll be interesting to see as he continues to stretch out like if that fourth inning continues to be an issue when do you say okay you're not ready to be in the majors go to go to triple a and then when do you say well shoot maybe he's not a starter (laughs) i don't want to jump the gun here because i still think the guy has a lot of talent and i still think he's you know, poised to be a major league pitcher, maybe, you know, three, four, five guy in a rotation kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Which, yeah, which is great. Is still, yeah, which is still a rotation arm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Just because a guy's a, a back end of the rotation starter doesn't mean he can't have a quality career. He's just not going to be a Hall of Famer. Yep. Yeah. O'Neill Cruz, two home runs today. His last game, five days before that, his last at bat in that game was a home run too. Three straight at bats with a home run, even though the first two had four days in between. <laughs> <laughs> so another example of Cruz slowly, you know what I'm saying? He played back to back days. He sat four days and then played again. Who knows? Maybe he had flu like symptoms <laughs> for a while. Uh, but the power's starting to show up, which is something that we talked about. Like eventually he'll start hitting the ball. Uh, hard and far again, and that yeah, showed up this week. Three impressive home runs, one sixteen, one fourteen on Sunday, and then Tuesday was one fifteen <laughs> off the bat. So you're starting to see it a little bit. He's hitting the ball hard. Um, O'Neill Cruz could be that first pirate to hit forty home runs since 1973 when Willie Stargell did it. It's been 50 years, Jake, since That's the Pirates crazy. have had a 40 home run guy. Stargell hit 44 that year. I think 71 when I was looking at it earlier. I think 71, he hit 48. Right? We haven't had one for had a 50 guys years. Come close, we we but... have. And I actually wrote that down. Thanks for bringing that up. Giles got close three times. He had 37, 38, and 39 in three different seasons with the Pirates. Josh Bell hit 37, Pedro hit 36, which actually led the National League that season. No one else has gotten even that close. So, had, how many did Kutch hit? 31. 31? I thought, it, I thought he got to 35. 
Yeah, and I and I did my cutoff at at thirty six because 30. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I did my cutoff at thirty six and just saying like even those thirty five guys like I want to look at who was close. Yeah. Yeah. So there may have been some thirty fives in there. I I don't know. Probably just more Giles. Maybe yeah. you know what I mean. I think I think did Bonds top out at like thirty four in Pittsburgh or something like that. But I don't remember. Not sure. But either way, if Cruz doesn't do it this year, I think it's safe to say he has the ability to do it. This guy can oh, accidentally yeah. hit 25 home runs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, as long as he stays on the field. Sure. I mean, I mean... But that, that goes without saying. Yeah, that goes without saying. And I don't think that his injury was anything to say like, well, but we yeah, don't know. No. He's fragile. No. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't think that's the case. But... Yeah. And he's going to be uh, – he's starting to understand the zone a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we noticed that time when we were down there. He was getting walked. But also just, like, not chasing kind of dumb pitches. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just a couple that are – low is gonna, always going to be the hard thing, right? It's always going to be tough. Yeah, because we've seen him crush low pitches. So he knows he's got the ability to, if he puts the barrel on it, it can go far. Yeah. So it's going to be hard for him not to swing at those. But like a fastball outside corner below the knees in the game today and just spit on it. And I'm like, man, that's a ball he swings at, you know, maybe early, two years ago, early. Yeah. And you, we understand that last month he started to, to show this. The other thing is, is I wonder I wonder how that will go with, take, with uh, called strikes. Because, you know, Judge has a problem with the low pitch being called a strike all the time. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's going to be a cruise thing as well. We might see some of that. But either I, way, I mean, I would imagine he's always going to be an aggressive swinger, one of those guys that that you're wanting, right? And mm-hmm. so I think that with his ability being aggressive is you'll take the strikeouts because he can flick a ball over the fence. Right. So right. I think that's a good thing. Mhm. Um I mean, the guy is huge right now. You watch <laughs> clips of like the 122. He's skinny. This is a different dude. Yeah. He's filling out. He's not going to be as fast as he was. That whole Tyreek Hill speed thing, that's not happening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're coming off a leg injury, which is probably going to yeah. slow you down a tick anyway. Mm-hmm. And you put on that kind of mass. I'm sorry. Hey, I'll take what I'll take. I'll take the five extra homers and the five less stolen bases, if that's what it means. What what what's his listed weight coming in? Do we I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that it changes. Yeah, they, probably they probably still got him listed at two fifteen or something like that. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? That seems like what everybody weighs in the majors anymore. Um, but anyway, uh, he also made an error today. But let's just keep it on the homers. <laughs> <laughs> So earlier this week, um, Dowry Moretta, the news of Dowry Moretta being taken out of the game. I don't remember exactly what day that was. I think it was either Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday. I think it was Tuesday. Okay. Um, he seems to to be destined for a long, I, he, guaranteed long IL stint. Even yeah. Sherrington said we expect him to be out for a long time. Is it Tommy John? That's going to be the question. Um, I don't, I you know, I didn't find anything, but I don't know that he's had it. Uh, sometimes it's hard to know. Like these guys, he could have had it at some point late earlier in his career, and I haven't seen anybody write about that whether he has or not. I'm sure if he gets it, it'll come out saying first or second. Yeah. Um. But it looks like he's going to be hurt for quite a while. Um, he'll probably miss, if not the bulk of this season, the whole thing. And he's yeah. kind of a guy that I thought really would have filled out the back end of this with our, uh, with what I consider the four guys at the back end with Bednar, Chapman, Majinski, and Holderman. I really thought he's in that next level. He's not really a fringe player to me. He's a major league pitcher. Oh yeah. But not having to put him in high leverage that all that often, I thought was going to make him a really valuable pitcher. I, I, you know, and I still like him in leverage situations. Get the starter out of the jam, and then we go to the bullpen. Right. I loved him in that that role. Yeah, yeah, he, and we he, talked a lot about that last year. Yeah. 
So I texted you on Tuesday, which is why I'm not sure, because it was when the news came out about Giolito. Mm-hmm. Signed with Boston two years, and he's headed for Tommy John. Which means Boston signed this dude, and they will pay him for a year and a half of non-baseball activities. Also a guy who doesn't have injury history. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. They said that if if they were going to count on anything from Giolito, it was innings. Yeah, everything else he, over he, that was going to be a bonus. Because when they talked to him about it, he's like, I, "I've never really dealt with arm problems before, so I don't know how this is going to go." Like, yeah, it's kind of uncharted territory for me. You almost seemed like that was a safe two year deal. Yeah, for it, like I said, for bulk for innings. Yeah, yeah. Like even if he gives you a four fifty ERA, like hey, it's passable major league pitcher. But he'll stay out there and, for the most part, give me innings, which yeah, is valuable. With the possibility of being good too. With the possibility of obviously, yeah, with the possibility yeah. of being good. But like I said, at worst case, right, right, you know what yeah. I mean. But I texted you and I said, "We need to talk about this because I've been pretty vocal about this. MLB's doing an investigation into it. Everybody's kind of starting to." go that route, right? And it, it was it was Tuesday when I first said this. The news came out about maybe he was pulled out of the game on Tuesday. Maybe the news came on Wednesday of like, hey, this is not good. Because I remember we were, I brought it up when it was Giolito. Yeah. And then I texted you later and was like, Moretta. And you were like, this is unbelievable. Then it hits home, Right. I mean, mm-hmm. not, not that it hasn't already. Right? We have our <laughs> share of injuries with Tommy yeah. John. You know, we're no different than the rest of the league. And recently, it's been a lot for us. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? A lot of the league, 20, 2021 was massive. And I don't know, like, we, I don't think we had much that year in the way of Tommy John, but it hit us hard in 2023, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you go Brew Baker, you go Burroughs, you go uh, Oviedo at the end of the year, um, and there I thought there was one more. Who am I missing? I mean, Velasquez wasn't Tommy John, but I mean, you, right? Harley and Garcia wasn't Garcia. Tommy John, but you, you know, you've got those guys who also had pitching injuries. But there was I thought there was one more Tommy John, and everybody that watching this and listening to this is saying, "Hey." You idiot. It's this guy. It's this guy. <laughs> um, how could you forget him? <laughs> how could you forget this guy? So anyway, um, I'll tell you how. It's called a brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> so forgive me, and I didn't write it down. But, yeah, I mean, it hit us hard last year. It's hit some other teams hard the, the two years before that. And, and no, I don't count Andy Rodriguez. Come on. Right. Oh, it, um, well, no. Wouldn't have been him. I thought it was a minor league guy. Either way. Um, just blanking, dude. Because you know I can't get it out of my head right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Who'd, who'd you say again? <laughs> Brubaker? Brubaker, Burroughs, and then Oviedo. Yeah. Late, right? So I thought there was one more because I think that somebody was quoting five, but one of those five was Endy. So it's not a pitcher. Yeah. So there was a there was another guy in the mix there that for some reason I can't remember, but um, and it's just so ridiculous. So anyway, um, something has to change here, man. Yeah, something sure. has to change in the game of baseball. And there's a lot of things that you could say this is the problem. And I had conversations with a few people. You and I have texted back and forth a little bit. And you and I have talked about this before. But I continue to make the case on two things. Okay? Let me pitch this to you a little bit. And I think that you have a lot of agree agreement on this anyway from our previous conversations. But max effort on every pitch is the first one. And probably, for me, the most important one. Yeah. And then also, I believe that the, the, the way that we build body mass in the weight room right now is a major problem. And, and I will say that that one goes to all major leaguers mm-hmm. because B, 
building mass, building muscles, it stretches. That's, that's what you're doing. And you're stretching all those tendons and those ligaments wherever they are, right? Whether they're in the arm, whether they're in the legs, all of those things. Like Mike Trout is a monster of a thick, like he's a running back and he can't stay healthy. He could, he could use uh, to shed a few pounds in, it, just okay. in muscle, right? Yeah. Uh, not that he can't, he's not going to be able to hit the ball over the fence. Like he still will be able to. But yeah. there's a lot of people play. who make the argument that these, these athletes today are way better than anything. They're weak. I don't care how many, I don't care how many pounds you can lift. You're weak if you keep getting injured. You have to find a way. Durability is a strength. Availability yeah. is a statistic. And I just, I can't get it past my head that, like, I don't care if you're good for a month and then you're out for a year and a half. That month was all I got from you. Mm -hmm. So anyway, velo, that's a big thing. My notes here were velo spin rate. Pitchers now aren't looking for ways to get hitters out. They're looking for ways to increase data points. Mm -hmm. um, studies show these are the things that get people, get hitters out. So velo goes up, command goes down, elbow gives out. And it feels like this is what we're doing. We're going down this path saying, let me be as good as I can be for a moment and then next man up this thing. Yeah. Shame on the pitchers and shame on the coaches. Mm -hmm. something has to change because this yeah, is ridiculous. And the something does not need it. The something that needs to change needs to change at the um, philosophy level uh, of pitching. It doesn't need to change. If it takes MLB stepping in to implement something, that's just going to be awful. You know what I'm saying? saying like, like, I don't want... Are you saying like, like like the 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 coaches the mindset of pitching in general? Yeah. We need to get back to pitching. Yeah, we need to get back to the art of pitching. Yeah, rather than grip and rip. So off, let me off the mound. Let me say this because you're saying a lot of a, a lot of hot button words here, right? And you read the article too, but mm -hmm. we started talking about this throughout the week. Tuesday, it really ramped up with with the Moretta injury, and then Friday morning, Ken Rosenthal and Eno Saris released an article on the Athletic with uh, maybe some more information than just my theories. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so they obviously yeah. didn't talk at all about body mass. That's probably still going to be a conspiracy theory by Josh Booth. <laughs> but but and Max others. Effort was, and others, you're right, but Max Effort was absolutely covered in this article. And a couple things that you said right there, and I think that you were alluding to, this goes all the way back to the youth level, right? This isn't mm -hmm. just major league coaches and pro coaches. But let's talk about college and high school and youth. So, I've, 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 because I coached high school baseball and I was a pitching guy, I've dealt with a lot of young arms that weren't in the best shape. And people talk about these younger kids shouldn't throw curveballs. They just shouldn't throw curveballs. Eh. If they throw a curveball the proper way, it's not a big deal. They shouldn't be throwing sliders. You can get away with fastball, curveball, change up at 12 years old. You don't really need it unless you actually throw hard enough to need it or if you're actually going to be going to play in Williamsport or something. You know what I'm saying? Average little leaguer doesn't need a ball. Well, what's the difference? Like when you say, I mean, because like, I, because they obviously, they didn't say a whole lot about this, but like, when you say sliders versus curveballs, is it just because you throw it harder? Uh, and and your, your the manipulation of your your hand through your pitching motion puts more stress on the elbow on the inner elbow. Mm, okay. Uh, curveball curveball is basically your your arm action is pretty much the same as a fastball. You're just you're at like pulling down like straight down for a curveball. I'm not talking sweepers or anything like that. This is little this is youth level even through high school. You're not talking sweepers. You're talking a 12 to 6 curveball where you're just kind of pulling it down. 
it's it's just taking your hand from this motion to this motion. So it doesn't really change the whereas a slider, a lot of people don't know how to throw it. They try to turn a doorknob and you're just crushing your elbow when okay. you're turning a doorknob while you're trying to pitch. Okay. So a lot of these things, and, and I'm going to stay on the youth thing, and I, I put a bunch of quotes in my notes here just so I could kind of refer to them as we were going. And there was something about the the youth that I wanted. It says, it starts with the youth. The number of pitchers drafted in the top 10 rounds with a history of elbow reconstruction rose from six between 2011 and 2013 to 24 pitchers between 21 and 2023. Now, those are pitchers who have been drafted, who have previously, before they were drafted, had mm-hmm. elbow reconstruction. That just sounds ridiculous. Now, obviously, I graduated all the way back in 2001. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have good data because we were all afraid of Y2K. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but, like, the thing is, is, like, I knew a guy mm-hmm. who needed Tommy John and said, no thanks, it's not worth the risk. And now how different that is. Now, that wasn't in mm-hmm. high school. That was a few years later when he was in college. But, like, it's interesting to say, like, wow, just get it done and and you'll be back. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think there was one piece in the article where they said, we used to say that if you had Tommy John, you were good for 10 years. And then it went to eight. And now it's like five, or I think it said it's three to five years is all the longer mm-hmm. you're going to last after Tommy John's. It's like, that's ridiculous. And yeah. why is that? Well, a lot of this points to max effort is one way to say it. They also, uh, I, I will say this though, as we talk about this, right? I want you guys to remember to think of one thing, because there was a quote I didn't write down that I told you before we started. There is a way to manage this. And it says, what if a guy doesn't have a whip of 0.8? What if a guy has a whip of 1.1? And he can play a full season. Like, there's still a way to manage this where you can be a good pitcher. Yeah. A 1.1 whip is still really good. Maybe ramp it up when there's a guy on base. (laughs) Ramp it up when you're on your last inning. Maybe if you got two strikes and you're having trouble putting a guy away, pound 100 in there, even though you've been hitting 95 or 96. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's got to be a way to say, I'll reach back for that when I need it. Nolan Ryan pitched for 85 years and he threw over 100. He just mm-hmm. probably didn't throw over 100 every pitch. He did it when he needed to. And right. it probably took him some time to learn that. Yeah. But, like, there's a lot of pitchers out there who pace themselves. Yeah, we talked about him before we started today. Justin Verlander's a great example of that. Early in his career, bro was throwing low to mid-90s. Yeah. And then he was throwing 103 every pitch in the ninth. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who was like, okay, I'm gonna, I got my fastball velo, I'm throwing it, I'm locating, I'm making sure that I'm throwing fastballs in good locations. Maybe Barry Bonds is up, maybe I just need to get a punchy right here because I got a guy on second and there's two outs. Then you reach back and you hit 100, get out of the inning, and go right back to throw in 94, 95 with good location. Mm-hmm. You know, we we talk about Luis Ortiz and how. Oh, Velo was down, but his control was there. Yeah, because when you throw 98, you you don't know where it's going. For, yeah. for Luis Ortiz, right? I mean, there are guys who throw 98 with ease and control and blah, blah, blah. Like Paul Skeens is, a, is you know, he's a big man. He's yeah. going to be able to to throw 98, 99 and, and still have placement. Now, when he reaches for 102, it might get away from him a little bit, but it's going to be effective because it's 102. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So, I mean, there's ways to manage that, right? And and different body types are going to, you know, I mean, Verlander's also a big guy. He's going to be able to handle a little more than than some guys. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Garrett Cole, he hits 100. And you know what I'm saying? He, he knows when he can reach back and get it. And he still sits at a certain, you know, a few ticks under that most of the game mm-hmm. and gets it when he wants. But this was a really... Kind of interesting article and, and a couple things I want to point out still. Um, the injury list placements for pitchers rose from 241 in 2010 to 552 in 2021. Once again, this goes back to 2021 really being the year. It's declined in 22 and 23, like not as many. 21 was like the height 
Yeah. Of, and that's when all this stuff was new. And we started worrying a ton about it, it's like spin rate. Yeah. It's like if a guy can't throw upper 90s, he's no good. And there's been like, hey, you can either throw 97 or you retire. And they said, what was the the average? One of the things we always used to say about baseball is the average career is about six years. Then you hit free agency and then maybe you get signed. Maybe you don't. You kind of hang it up, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's like a there's yeah. like a piece of that that kind of happens, right? They're saying now it's it's uh 2. it's 7. under three years, and for pitchers, it's 2.7. That's a running back, Crazy. dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we're just cutting these guys, we're cutting these guys' careers short. But also, if this isn't good for your team, right? You got to have right. guys available. You can't have enough pitchers. If you've got one that's good and he gets hurt, the next guy might not be as good. <laughs> you know, yeah. you might have to call up somebody that you don't want to. You know and, what I mean? And, and we're going to run out of good arms. 100%. Like, and they're talking about expansion. You can't expand until you fix this arm problem. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about a whole nother, two whole more rosters of pitchers and. That doesn't mean 10 more guys, right? That doesn't mean 30 more guys. You want to You're stop, talking about another 100 pitchers. You want to stop position players hitting the mound? That's why they're doing it. I mean, it's it, there's a whole list of reasons, right? We say like, oh, we're going to save our bullpen. You're basically just saving their arms. Yeah. Uh, one of the things they said, it was, it was a lot about overuse. Um, there's, there's some disagreements in this, right? They, they talked to mm -hmm. one guy. He said, it's this, he said, it's the sweeper and the velo. He said, the sweeper's a big deal. Otani threw the sweeper more than anybody had his second Tommy John already. Right. And, you know, so there's, there's a little bit of there, a little bit of that in there, but, um, what was the number that this guy, so this guy Meister, what's his name? Keith Meister. He's the Rangers head physician. And he's done, gosh, I had this written down here. Approximately 230 elbow ligaments last year. 230 surgeries just he did. Yeah. And he said he's on pace for way more than that already. Mm -hmm. That's wild. I don't know. There, there was another thing here that says, uh, and I thought this was interesting, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, they say when when uh, this is paraphrased, they used to say when you were pitching, you should grip a baseball in a way that you could throw a raw egg without breaking it. And now pitchers apply a death grip to the ball at release. Those muscles acutely lengthen or actually lengthen as an acute. I think it's acutely lengthen in what is known as eccentric contraction. OK, if you're a doctor, you know what the heck I just said. If not, let's move <laughs> on. The result can be almost like a hamstring tearing affecting different pitchers in different parts of the arm. So they're gripping and they're, and like I said, it's max effort because I have to reach a certain spin. Yeah. So that when I was learning pitching, we were, we were taught to have this gap, right? Mm -hmm. Between the, 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 the baseball in your hand. And now they're, they're teaching like, like you grip that baseball and you pull hard on these seams. So, uh, and, and it's, they want to get that rotation. Mm -hmm. They want you to pull, but, but if you think about it and when they, they compare it to the hamstring, if you think about your forearm and like trying to flex, use muscles when you're throwing a baseball, you want whip. Okay. That's a, a big term in pitching is whip, whipping your arm through the zone. You should be loose. When you're trying to create a whip, right? Think about an actual it, whip in snapping. That theory, to be fair, in that theory, right? L I mean, let's not, like, right? That's not what they're teaching now. Right. Okay. Right. So but just, that, just for the, I mean, you just look, for the you sake of the argument. Yeah, and you think about the old baseball cards, right? And you look, and the, you're just looking at this like, elbow, and you're like, that doesn't even make sense. It's like backwards, and, and like, that was the whip. You know what I mean? He mm -hmm. was loose, and he was just snapping his arm through mm -hmm. and he was using his core muscles to pitch the baseball, not his arm muscles. Now they're basically using their forearms a lot because when you grip a baseball, when you're trying to grip it hard, mm -hmm. you're getting that forearm contraction, which 
your forearms are connected to all the upper muscles. Mm -hmm. That's where your ligaments come in. And, and, and so I, I've always had a little bit of a anatomy thing that I've always kind of liked in the back of my head. So this is kind of triggering that as well. But like all that stuff works together. And when you're when you're death gripping, as they're saying, you're, you're, you're tightening up your form. It's, it's not allowing your arm to whip. And the deceleration is more uh, abrupt. Like the, you don't you don't have that deceleration. You're just stopping because you're you're not loose. So the thing is, is it's effective, but it's causing injuries, right? And that's what we're learning is fair. It, fair. It's yeah. awesome, right? You're getting a lot of good stuff. Right. We probably have guys in the majors who wouldn't be in the majors unless they did those things. So it's 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 creating this the ability for these guys to make it, but it's what's also giving these guys the ability to make it is the fact that the guy who was in front of them just had Tommy John. So <laughs> something's got to give at some point. Yeah. Something has to change. They have to figure out how to do those things and not do those things when those, when it calls for those things, because we've got to start being healthy. Mm -hmm. This is terrible, right? You cannot build a team Knowing all of this stuff, like it's impossible. Every rotation is going to have a guy, unless they knew about it ahead of time, which technically the Pirates knew about Oviedo ahead of time and probably should have done something about it. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is like this will continue to happen. And one of the things that they said, that one of the guys who didn't agree, right, uh, with with necessarily some of the things there is uh, Glenn, I don't know how to say this name, read the article if, if you guys can, uh, <laughs> the athletic right now is literally like a dollar a month for 12 months. Like there's always really cheap deals. This is actually one of the most inexpensive subscriptions you can have for a year. I mean, there are Pittsburgh stuff that costs way more than this. So, and this is like Ken Rosenthal, who's I think is really good. You guys can say what you want about, I mean, they got to get clicks. So they're going to write about the Dodgers. Okay. But this is also mm -hmm. the athletic is also the, the place where like Andrew McCutcheon wrote one of their first articles. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's way back in the day. You know what I mean? So anyway, this guy, he be he believes science points to three factors. Effort, which is consistent on all these things. It's effort, effort, effort. Velo is an indication, right? And then he says the amount of pitching and mechanics. So he's blaming those types of things. We saw that. We think the amount of pitching probably had something to do with Oviedo. Um, but this is a conversation that's not going to stop, dude. Something needs to change. Um, and this even says, like, there was a study of driveline. Uh, stress on elbow per mile per hour on the pitch is higher for secondary pitches, like changeups and sliders. So this goes back to that. Thus, a pitcher who throws his slider as hard as his fastball actually put more stress on the elbow. <clears throat> Jacob deGrom. And you know what I'm saying? Like, that's... Dude, this is wild. And um, you now know this. Mm-hmm. And you know what works and what injures people. You've got to find a way to marry the two. You've got to find a way to get past this and let these guys continue to be healthy. If I was a GM, I wouldn't spend a nickel on pitching. I mean, that sounds ridiculous, but I let's say this. <laughs> I'd be nervous to spend a nickel on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd be... Yeah. Stock it's up fragile. the arms in the minor leagues and see what we can make because, and I'll pay for all the hitters. Make sure that, you know, the Pirates are looking for the for 20 home run guys that have four of them for the first time or for the second time ever in history, right? First time since 99 <laughs> that we had four guys hit 20 home runs. And we're trying to get that to happen. We're looking for a guy to get 40 homers. No, no, no. I'm signing like five guys that'll guarantee me 30. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I'm going to yeah. make sure that... That, that magic number of four that I always talk about, I'm going to make sure my offense can average six runs a game. <laughs> That's the only way you can win in this league. So anyway, we need to move on. Uh, speaking of pitching, speaking of... <laughs> <sighs> Relax. I just... I, I tried not to get excited, right? Yeah. And it's pitching, and because you coach pitching, I wanted to make sure that you had a lot of room to talk there. Jared Jones is getting a shot to make this rotation. He's not on the 40 man. You buying or are you selling that? Uh, so I haven't got to 
watch it as close as I'd like to. But what we've seen when we were in, down there, I mm -hmm. mean, dude looks good. I, I'm, I might be, I might be buying this. So yes, he looks good. So does Paul Skeens. Yeah. We already know Paul Skeens doesn't have a shot. Yeah. Jared Jones is, on the, is not on the 40 man roster. So what I'm saying is regardless of how good he does, are you buying or selling? Do you buy that he has a shot? Not if he's good enough. Yeah, I buy that he has a shot. I mean, there's there's some guys that are that might be playing their way off the mm. four you man roster. Yeah. So, you know, so if, at if least that, to if make that would move. happen and, and yes, and you know, I think that move would be there to be made. Yeah, I think I'm buying. I think that they will give him a shot. I don't know that he'll make it. Mm -hmm. But I think they will. They are giving him a shot. I don't think this is lip service. I think that there's a chance that there. But he has to like. I think if all things are equal, there ain't no way. And we talked about Quinn Priester looking good. If that continues to happen, and we don't see more of what we saw in the fourth inning today, Sunday. But if that continues to happen. Luis Ortiz hasn't looked terrible. We also, I mean, there's a lot more. Like, if you're making a decision based on the first two weeks, boy, we are, we are in trouble. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's no way in the world that I'm saying that I'm convinced that Quinn Priester's good enough to be there now. He could use mm -hmm. seasoning in in the minor leagues, especially if he's either one losing velo, which I don't really think that's the problem. I think. The problem is the location on the velo. I mean, he threw it right over the middle. Like you can't get more middle than he threw that pitch. <laughs> and so I think that if he can, if he can still hit spots, one of the things I noticed with with Priester is, uh, at least today, he looked really good in the first three innings. And there were other pitches that were that were middle and down that none of them got over that 93. You know what I'm saying? All of his 94, 95s were up two balls, one in the top of the zone that got fouled off that was like 95.7, which was his hardest throw today. So, like, I think that when he elevates, he gets his velo. When he's down, he just doesn't, right? And so yeah. if that's him, then that's him. If you locate, that's fine. Not You're not pitching slow if you're throwing 92. Right. Right? The, the soft throwers are the guys who are sub-90, period. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not buying that 91 is slow. I'm not buying it. <laughs> you can be an effective pitcher at 88, let alone 91, if you can locate. And if your secondary stuff is extra good, we need we need to see that. We've liked this slider so far, but we need to see that with Quinn Priester. Like I said, I don't think this guy's a future ace. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I do think he's a future major leaguer. If he shows up, is Jared Jones going to get a shot? Probably not, right? You'd rather go with Priester and keep Jared Jones down there for a little bit longer. Uh, if Luis Ortiz, I mean, we're looking at two spots because you know that Perez and Gonzalez are in this rotation, whether they earn it or not, which Perez has looked really good. Gonzalez, it's a mixed bag a little bit. It's been, what, two outings? So still, a lot of work to be done. Yeah. And Mitch Keller's already the opening day starter. So you're only looking for two guys. Mm -hmm. And you've got Roanzi, who has no options. And some people have been really uh, excited about what they've seen from him. Bailey Falter, not so much. So, like, Josh Fleming, not so much. But there's a competition there. There's, like, four pitchers going for two spots. So I'm yeah. buying that they're giving him a shot, but I think the other guys are going to be the, the decision makers. If they're okay, they'll, they'll be on the team and he won't yeah. be. Yeah, I agree with that. I'll tell you what game he's not playing. <laughs> Surprisingly, the MLB breakout yeah. game. The spring breakout game that MLB Network is doing between the Orioles and the Pirates, and they're doing this with all the teams, right? Everybody's got one. Uh, the Pirates and Orioles are Thursday at 7 p.m. It's on MLB Network. Um, you're going to see pitchers like Paul Skeens, Solomito, Bubba Chandler, Thomas Harrington, Braxton Ashcraft, Hunter Barco, Patrick Riley, J.C. Flowers, David Matoma, Tyler, Tyler Samaniego. I haven't heard I haven't heard much from him. And then, you know, those prospect guys are like, dude, you're sleeping on him. <laughs> <laughs> but no Jared Jones there. Uh catchers, Abraham Gutierrez to me is the highlight of that. Uh mm -hmm. just because we've seen him. Omar Alfonso, Axial Plaz. Um infielders, Tamar Johnson, highlight of that. Mitch Jeb, Sung Che Chang, 
Jack Brannigan, Jordano De Los, De Los Santos, Garrett Forster, Jesus Castillo, Johnny Severino, Tony Blanco. Reading the whole roster here, guys. Outfitters, <laughs> Lonnie White Jr., Shalen Polanco, Jace Bowen, Estuar Suero, and Trace Gonzalez. Uh, who stands out to you? I mean, pitching-wise, that's stacked. We understand that. I don't think that we have to really even... Um, I don't think we even have to go there. You're going to see Paul Skeens. You're going to see Salamino. You're going to see Harrington. Those are three guys that we saw in Sarasota when we were down there. Uh, equally impressed with all three in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, Braxton Ashcraft has been pretty good. Uh, Bubba Chandler got one outing so far, and I I really like Bubba Chandler. So really interesting uh, in the pitching side. I want to ask you about the hitting side. Not term is anybody not named Termar Johnson. <laughs> so the, the the there's there's three that I'm kind of I'm kind of looking at here. Uh, for me, it, it's Mitch Jeb, just because I, I feel like I feel like there's something there that I don't know about. Yeah, so I'm interested. I'm interested. Sure. Uh, Chang, I mean, we, we saw him play down at Bradenton. Yep, dude, dude can hit the ball hard. And as far as outfield, like Jace Bowen, mm. like I, I'd like to see what. What he has, he was in the fall league. Yeah, and he was crushing the ball. Yeah, Uh, so yeah, those are the guys I'm kind of looking at. Um, About you, yeah. For me, it's uh, it's Lonnie White Jr. uh, in a way because I haven't seen him, and so to get eyes on him, that's one of those things. Like I want to see players, Uh, maybe even Shalen Polanco. He he was in the game today, Um, but was it today or? No, it was on the radio game the other day. I forget. Either way, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see him. We've heard that name. Now let's let's get eyes on him. And then I think I'm with you on Mitch Jeb too because we saw results, but we didn't think we were going to. <laughs> yeah. So there was a little bit of that like, hey, you know, how real is this guy? Sometimes it's good to see him. We've had other guys in the past with with results, but then you watch him and you're like, yeah, I don't know though. You know what I mean? And and that's yeah. and they've proven out to not work out. You know what I mean? And so some of that is there, but I am interested for that. Um and then I want to know if Axio Plaza or Omar our, our Alfonso is that catcher we saw when we went over to Pirate City that day. <laughs> Cause that dude had a cannon and I had cannon. no idea who he was. And it was like seeds, man. Yeah. Like and and we saw a lot of catchers working. No one was close to this guy. No, no. So I'm interested in whoever that kid is. <laughs> but I wish we could have found out. I wish we could have found out. Maybe it's one of those two guys. And if it is, we'll know. I mean, we, mm. we're we right there. I think I'll know if I see him and say, that's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I want to see that yeah. guy throw somebody out. Um, he was a bigger kid, too. Yeah, not really tall, right? But he was, he right. was thick, man. He's, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm real interested in those. Uh, I think you know, I think it's a really cool thing what they're doing. They're getting to highlight these prospects. So many times we hear these guys' names, and we look up their stats. And then you know, I, with MLB TV now, which I get every year, now you've got all the minor league games. The problem is like, how often do I really watch those games because the Pirates are playing? Yeah. And so sometimes you see them, sometimes you don't. When you're talking about the young, young guys, half their games are broadcast. You know what I'm saying? You don't yeah. You don't necessarily get to see them all the time, and so it's it's kind of difficult. And really, the broadcasts aren't as good. You don't get to see as much as you want. Um, so, you know, you you rely on the, the guys from Three and a Half Gringos <laughs> to to kind of feed you all the information and some of the some of the other prospect guys that are that are around to kind of give you all that information. But it's like I'm hearing, I want to see. This will be a short, uh, you know, short sample, small sample of of yeah. all these guys. Uh, but it would be cool to kind of at least have a face so that when you think of those names, you can apply that and say like, yeah. That the face, the body type. Yeah, I can see I this you, guy. I you tell know? you, with that in mind, there was a lot of people when we were down at spring training that I'm like, I don't know who that is. Like, I I can't figure out, like, who that yeah. is. And then as we were leaving, I was like, you know, I could tell who some of the people were. Yeah, we were calling them out, and, like, from the outfield saying, so-and-so's yeah. at short, so-and-so's at third. And yeah. we were actually, we were getting some of them right where we would have been like, I got no clue. 
Right. Like if you would have said pick out Jackson Glenn, I'd have been like, Bleh. you <laughs> are you Jackson Glenn and you're punking me? <laughs> so funny. all right, man. Uh this was fun. Um a lot to talk. I know I kind of got, you know, a little excited there. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I held myself pretty well with the injury <laughs> stuff, but it frustrates me because I still believe that you don't have to throw a hundred to be good. I, and if you I'm throw a right hundred down the pipe, Archimedes Caminero, it's still going to get crushed. Yeah. It's all about location. Yep. Location and off and, and timing. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. So breakout game this Thursday. We'll talk about it maybe next week if there's anything really interesting. And also St. Patrick's Day is next Sunday. So mm-hmm. if you're one of those fun ones. So <laughs> have a good week, guys. Let's go Bucks. Yeah, let's go Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck, cannonball coming, and let's go, Bucks!